What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to simplify rational expressions that have trinomials and polynomials in them, all right? So you can basically break this down into a three-step process, all right? And it's right here. So first of all, you just have to factor the top and the bottom. You factor them individually, all right? Then if you have anything in common on the top and the bottom, you just cancel those out, all right? And then once you cancel those out, they basically just make the whole problem simplify, all right? So to solve these types of problems, you have to be comfortable with factoring. And if you need a little refresher on that, I'll link a video to that in the card above. But otherwise, I'm just gonna start with this example right here. x squared plus five x plus six over two x squared minus eight x minus 24, all right? So again, I'm gonna start by factoring the top over here. And as you can see, the top right here has a leading coefficient of just one, right? So we can factor this by just splitting it up into two sets of parentheses, all right? So first of all, x squared, I can write that as x times x right there. And then to figure out the numbers that go right here, you just have to look at your last number right here. So we have a positive six, right? So what two numbers can we multiply together to get six, but they also have to add up to positive five? Well, that would be a positive two and a positive three, right? Two times three is equal to six, and two plus three is equal to five, right? So that's the number we're looking for in the middle right there. So then these are the two numbers we're gonna plug in right here. So a positive two and a positive three. Okay, cool. We factored the top, now let's factor the bottom. So here we have two x squared minus eight x minus 24. Is there anything we can pull out from all these three terms right off the bat? Well, yes there is, right? We can pull out a two. All of these terms right here, all three of them, are divisible by two, so we can factor out a two, all right? So then what's gonna be left in here? Well, if you factor something out, it's the same thing as dividing by that. So if we pulled out a two, it's the same thing as dividing by two. So it's like we, we're dividing all these terms right here by two, all right? So two x squared divided by two, well, there's a two on top and the bottom, so those cancel out, and we're just left with this x squared right there. Okay, and then uh, here, negative eight divided by two, that's equal to negative four. So here we're gonna have negative four, x, right, so minus 4x, okay, and then here negative 24 divided by 2, that's equal to negative 12, right, so minus 12, okay, so as you can see, we can still factor the bottom right here, right, this trinomial that has a leading coefficient of 1, right, so let's simplify this one more time, so first of all, let's just write what we have on top really quick, so here we have x plus 2 times x plus 3, right, and then on the bottom, we have a two right here on the outside. And then let's factor this inside part right here. Well, again, there's a leading coefficient of just one, right? So again, I can split it up into two parentheses, okay? So here I have an x squared, so I can, again, split that into x times x. And then to figure out the numbers, you just look at your last number right here, which is a negative 12, right? So negative 12. What two numbers can I multiply together to get negative 12, but they also have to add up to this middle number right here, negative four? Well, in this case, it would be a negative six and a positive two, all right? Negative six times two is equal to negative 12, but also negative six plus two is equal to negative four, right? So that's what we're looking for right here, right? So these are the two numbers we're gonna plug in, a negative six, and a positive two. Okay, so now that we've factored the top and the bottom as much as possible, now we can start canceling stuff out, right? So is there anything on the top and the bottom that is the same? Well, yes there is, right? We have an x plus two in parentheses on the top, and we have this x plus two in parentheses on the bottom, right? So those can cancel out. Okay, so what does that leave us with? Well, now we're just left with this x plus three on top, okay? and then that's gonna go over whatever's left on the bottom, which is this two and this x minus six in parentheses, right? So we have a two and an x minus six in parentheses, all right? So then this would be your simplified answer right here. So x plus three over two times x minus six in parentheses. Okay, now the last thing we have to talk about is dividing by zero, right? So in just a simple fraction or simple division problem, if we had zero divided by five, well, your answer would simply just be zero, right? Zero can be in the top of a fraction or division problem, right? 
But what if I flipped these two numbers right here? What if I had five divided by zero? Well, then this, like I've said before, is the math equivalent of taking a dump on the sidewalk. It is illegal. You can't do this. You cannot divide by zero because when you divide by zero, you, you get something called undefined, okay? So you never want the bottom part of your fraction or division problem to be equal to zero, okay? And that's the same case for a simple little division problem like this or something more complicated like this, all right? You don't want your bottom part to be equal to zero, okay? So if we look at our denominator right here, what x values would make the whole bottom part be equal to zero? Well, to figure that out, you just have to take each of your parentheses, so whatever's in each of your parentheses. So here we have an x minus six, okay? Set that equal to zero. And then we'll take this other set of parentheses, x plus two, and set that equal to zero, right? So now let's just solve for x right here. x minus six is equal to zero, just add six, add six, right? These cancel out, so here we're just left with x is equal to six, all right? And then here, uh, x plus two is equal to zero, right? Subtract two, subtract two, these cancel out. So here we're left with x is equal to negative two, okay? So if x is equal to six, or if x is equal to negative two, it would make our whole bottom part equal to zero right here, okay? And you can see that, right? Because if we plugged in, let's say six, so if we plugged in a six here and a six here, so here, six minus six, that would be equal to zero. And then we have this two outside, right? So we'd have two times zero times this last set of parentheses, six plus two, which is eight, right? So two times zero times eight, that's equal to zero. Okay, so when we plug in a six for x right here, it makes the whole bottom equal to zero, right? And it's the exact same thing when we plug in a two, right? Or, or sorry, a negative two. So if we plug in a negative two here and a negative two here. Okay, it again would make the whole bottom equal zero. Okay, so when you simplify a rational expression like this, you wanna make that clear, right? So you're gonna say, this is our simplified answer, but, and I'm just gonna, you just write a little comma, you're gonna say x cannot be equal to our two answers that we found, right? Six or negative two. Now, one last thing I wanna point out is here, our two answers right here are six and negative two, right? So if we plugged these two numbers into our simplified answer, well, you could see, first of all, six. Here we'd get six minus six, that'd be equal to zero, and then zero times two is equal to zero, so we'd be dividing by zero there, right? So six is obviously not allowed. But if we plugged in negative two right here, we would get negative two minus six, and that's equal to negative eight, right? And then negative eight times two is equal to negative 16. And you can totally have negative 16 in your denominator right here, okay? But the problem is, that our simplified answer right here doesn't show the whole picture, okay? This is the whole picture, right? Because here we can see that clearly x plus two is one of our factors, which when we plug in negative two right there, that would make it equal zero, right? And it's the exact same thing up here, okay? So if you plugged in six or negative two into this trinomial right here, that would make it equal zero, okay? So you have to take into account the whole picture, right? Your simplified answer is too simplified you basically have to take a step back and then look at all your factors that were on the bottom. Okay, so I know that's a lot to take in, so let's just try one last example. Okay, so here's our second example. P cubed minus two P squared plus two P minus four over P squared minus seven P plus 10, all right? So again, the first thing you wanna do is just factor the top and bottom individually, all right? So let's start with the top right here. Now, is there anything that I can pull out from each of these terms? No, right? There's nothing they all have in common. Now, as you can see, we also have four terms right here, right? So when you have four terms, one of the easier ways to factor this is to just factor it by grouping, okay? And the way you factor by grouping is just take your first two terms, put that in a set of parentheses, and then take your last two terms and put that in a set of parentheses, all right? Now, you're just gonna factor each of these little groups individually. So let's start with this one right here, p cubed minus two p squared. Is there anything I can pull out from both of these terms? Well, there is, right? I can pull out a p squared from both of these. So let's pull out a p squared. And then what's left in our parentheses right here? Well, here I would just be left with p minus two, right? p minus two. Okay, cool. Now let's factor this second group. So two p minus four, I can factor out a positive two from both of these, right? So a plus two. And then what's left inside my parentheses right here? 
Well, remember, it's the same thing as just dividing by two, right? So these twos cancel out. So here we're just left with P. And then negative four divided by two, that's equal to negative two, right? So minus two. Okay, cool. So I factored that as much as possible. Now let's move on to the bottom right here. So P squared minus seven P plus 10, right? So as you can see, there's nothing we can pull out from all these three terms. And the other thing is this has a leading coefficient of one, right? So again, we can factor this like normal just using our two sets of parentheses. So P squared, I can split that into P times P. And then to figure out your numbers, just look at your last number right here, positive 10, right? So 10, what two numbers can we multiply together to get 10, but they also have to add up to negative seven. Well, in this case, that would be negative five and a negative two, right? Negative five times negative two, that's equal to positive 10, right? And negative five plus negative two, that's equal to negative seven, right? So these are the two numbers we're gonna plug in right there. So negative five and negative two. Okay, now this might look like it's completely factored, but whenever you factor by grouping, there's one last step that you have to take into account, right? So here you can see we have the same thing in both of our parentheses, right? P minus two and P minus two. So to finish factoring this, the first thing you have to do is rewrite it just once. So we're gonna have P minus two, but again, just write it once, all right? And then we're gonna multiply that by another set of parentheses and what goes here? Well, whatever's left here, okay? So we already used our P minus twos right there. So all we're left with is this P squared and this plus two, right? So that's what goes here p squared plus two. Okay, and then on the bottom over here, I'll just bring that over. So here we have p minus five and p minus two. Okay, so now that we factored the top and the bottom completely, right, as much as possible, now we can start canceling stuff out, okay? So here you can see we have a p minus two in parentheses on the top and on the bottom, right? So we can cancel those out. So then on the top, all we're left with is this p squared plus two, right? p squared plus two, and it's gonna go over this one right here, p minus five, p minus five, all right? So then that would be your simplified answer right here. Okay, now the last thing we have to do is look at our shiz, right? Look at our dump on the sidewalk. So to do that, we just have to look at the denominator right here where we can see all of our factors, right? So in this case, what P values do we have to exclude? Well, again, you just have to look at each of your parentheses, right? So here we have a P minus five and a P minus two, right? And then you just set each of those equal to zero. Okay, so then here P would be equal to five and then here P would be equal to two, all right? So positive five and positive two. Okay, so again, if we plug in a positive five, right here in the denominator, it would make the whole denominator equal to zero, right? Because if we plugged in a five there, and a five there, here we would have five minus five, which is zero. And then here we would have five minus two, which is three. And then zero times three is just zero, right? And again, the same thing if we plugged in a two, right? So if we plugged a two there and there, when you multiply, it's equal to zero. Okay, so the two numbers to exclude in order to not take a shiz on the sidewalk would be a positive two and a positive five. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below. Also, there's a couple playlists attached that I think you'll find helpful. So definitely check those out and I'll see you there.